Hi, I'm Groovy Kim. You may know me from some of my other videos where I talk about how I healed myself from autoimmune disease, liver disease, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, other chronic health conditions, including chronic pain. And I talk about in my other videos, which I highly recommend you might want to start with, especially my original testimonial, uh, where I talk about how I learned from Dr. Joe Dispenza how to actually heal myself and throw away my prescriptions and cancel my appointments. Actually, that's not entirely true. I didn't have to cancel any appointments because the pandemic hit and uh, they were canceled on me. And so, and I just let it be. I didn't bother to check back in because I started having good results and I feel I don't need to go anymore. So here's the deal. I want to come clean. I have not attended any of Dr. Joe Dispenza's workshops. I've never been. I would love to go. In fact, I was corresponding with a staff member from Dr. Joe Dispenza's team. And one of his team members was, uh, yeah, wrote back and forth quite a bit last year with me. And we had it all planned out that they were going to take my testimonial because I had such wonderful results, you know, on my own. Um, and they really wanted to know more about how I did it and would I record it. Uh, for them so that they could share it and I said sure of course I'm so happy to help and so I recorded it and it's on my channel it's it's the original one it's uh, well I have two of them I have the original testimonial and then I have the updated one you might consider this video an updated updated one um, and if you know this go ahead and watch that original one because you can really see the difference in my face. I mean, I'm just healthier. I'm just so much healthier from when I first started. And here I thought I was healed then. My goodness, the healing just keeps keeps going, guys. Okay, so I have not attended a workshop. Well, you might be wondering, then, then how did you do it? I dove in. You know, as soon as my doctors told me my diagnosis, I, let me back up a little bit in case you don't know my story. I, I, I came from a really, really uh, stressed out family, okay, so I was already a stressed out little kid. I grew up, I ended up having all kinds of issues in my knees, I had multiple surgeries, I was told I would need total knee replacement in both of them, and uh, in the meantime I became an alcoholic. I started smoking cigarettes. Uh, my hands started to fail. I could no longer use my fingers. I couldn't write my name. I was starting to lose the use of my legs. I couldn't walk. Boy, my health was going downhill. And two years ago, it was so bad. I was in the emergency room all the time. And they were drawing out uh, between two and four liters of liquid out of my abdomen with a needle this long every two weeks that went on for months and I, I was truly living a nightmare and then the last straw they said well you know this rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease that means your uh, immune system is actually attacking you your body it, it, you're attacking your own joints and they will become disfigured and the inflammation is already so terrible that uh, we're going to go ahead and have you start injecting yourself with Humira. And I tried that and I went home and here I am loyally injecting myself. My uh, symptoms, they got worse. They got worse. Oh my God, they got worse. I woke up in the night with horrible cramps, cramps that would not release. And I was starting to disfigure. I couldn't hold my cup. I couldn't hold a pen. Uh, my feet were beginning to draw in. And I thought, oh my goodness, is this MS? Do I have MS? Got worse and worse and worse. And 
they were saying, now you're going to go to the cancer center and you're going to begin infusion treatments. And that's where they put an IV drip in your arm with medication that suppresses the immune system so that it'll stop attacking your joints. Well, that sounds all good and well, but think about that for a minute. That means you're messing with your immune system. You go doing that, now you're susceptible to all kinds of horrible things. And in fact, uh, the Humira itself, or any kind of meds like that where for autoimmune disease, suppresses the immune system. I immediately, after being on Humira, came back with uh, a positive tuberculosis test. Talk about messing with my immune system. I said, oh, hell no. Groovy Kim ain't doing that. No more. I threw the Humira away. I threw my prednisone away. I don't even remember. I was taking that all the time. And they were, I was on again and off again, on again and off again. As, as the swelling would get bad, they'd put me on again, whatever, up and down with meds, right? Threw those away. Okay. And I said, I'm going to learn another way. This is ridiculous. And my gut and my heart, my instincts told me it was wrong. And one thing that was a red flag that told me it was wrong was the language the doctors were using. They didn't understand autoimmune disease. There is no cure. We don't really know why you have it, they told me. Well, of course, I went online and I dove in. I am, uh, I've always been a scientific researcher on my own, right? Sci scientists want to be. Uh, <laughs> Always, my whole life, I'm very much into science. So I immediately dove in and wanted to learn about this autoimmune disease thing and figure it out. You know, I'm going to solve this. Well, lo and behold, none of Western medicine knows how to solve this. Lo and behold, there are a crap load of people in our country. And indeed, I'm sure all over the world, but that's basically where I, I focused my studies was here in the U.S., um, that are dealing with this autoimmune disease thing and anxiety and stress are all related totally related to that psoriasis anything that's autoimmune all of those are stress related and we've we've known that for a long time but oh well here's a prescription or something else chemically to solve it chemically to solve it well, the more I studied, the more I realized all the chemicals they're talking about, you already have in your body. You just need to know how to release it and tap into it. You've got your own pharmacy that you were born with, that this avatar already came with. And meditation is how you tap into it. And so I dove in hard. Now, without attending a workshop, Curvy Kim, how'd you do it? I watched every single video I could, I, I could get my hands on. I, I searched Dr. Joe Dispenza like there was no tomorrow. I bought all of his books. I, I read Becoming Supernatural. I read You Are the Placebo Effect. I read Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And I checked out every single book I could at the library. These are just the ones I happen to own. I bought a box full more of his books because I give them away as gifts. That's how much I believe in him. And yes, I would love to attend one of his workshops. Please, Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe's staff, anyone, if you're listening, um, yeah, get a hold of me because I'm, I'm interested. Here's what I'm really interested in. I do want to attend a workshop, but I'm also interested in continuing to help in any way I can because I feel like I'm a natural born teacher. That's why I'm making these videos for you guys. I figure if I can do it and I didn't even attend a workshop, heck, maybe I could teach someone else just like me. 
you know, someone else who's dealing with this, who is just at their wits end and doesn't want to follow what the doctors are saying. And your instinct, you know, there's got to be a better way. Well, I'll tell you what there is. I found it. I'm living proof. I feel so much better. I haven't been to the doctor in a year. Can you believe it? And guess what? They haven't even checked on me. They don't even know that I'm doing okay. They have no idea that I'm walking around. In fact, I'm dancing around and that uh, I have no issues, no more swelling. Fingers are no longer dislocating. I haven't dislocated a knee in a while. I say a while because they're still a little iffy. I have, uh, they told me, a torn uh, meniscus. And I've got big hunks of cartilage floating around <laughs> that need to be removed. Slowly, Honu and I have been removing them in my meditations. Now, if you don't know who Honu is, she's a sea turtle. She's my spirit grandmother. And she came to me in a dream. And uh, if you don't know about the placebo effect, it all has to do with that. Please watch my other videos, um, which will further explain. Dive in, like I said I did with Dr. Joe Dispenza. Dive into my videos and you'll learn from me. Same principle. Because knowledge is power. The more you know, the more you'll understand, the more you start to believe, and then the, the more your symptoms begin to go away. And then, of course, the more you're going to want to learn and know, the more you see the results, right? That's what happened to me. The more I saw results, oh my gosh, I feel so much better, the more I wanted to learn. Now, wait a minute. How is this working? Right? There's Groovy Kim Miss Science Mind, right? I need I needed to know. So one of the first things I learned was that language, yes, Ducky, I hear you. Ducky is my green cheeked conure. She often joins in in my videos. So excuse her. She's a wonderful bird. In case you haven't met her before. Yeah, here's Ducky. I love her so much. Anywho. Let's see, where was I? Oh, language. That's one of the first things I learned. And you know, it is so important. I had to shed the very words of my diagnoses. All of them. For example, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. I do not say I have rheumatoid arthritis. I don't say it anymore. I cut that out. I don't say I have anything. I, I stop. I stop myself. I don't say it anymore. It took me a while. Instead, change your language. You change what your body begins to do. It's weird, but it's true. So now instead, I say, a ways back, I was diagnosed with so-and-so. My doctors, a couple of years ago, diagnosed me with osteoarthritis. I've had knee issues since I was 16 years old and probably even before, but boy, it just got really bad towards uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so, point is, watch your language. Don't own any of it because it's not yours. Do you understand? It helps to watch your language because it's not yours. Don't say my arthritis. You say I was diagnosed with, I no longer have it. Whether you believe that or not at this point doesn't matter. Say it anyway. Say it to yourself. You don't have to say it out loud. Say it to yourself. Man, I'm so glad that this arthritis is going away. If that's where you are at now. Where I am now, about a year and a half or so later, since I started this journey of learning from Dr. Joe, I say, I was diagnosed with a couple years ago, but I don't have it anymore. And I actually don't even like to, to use the words arthritis anymore or uh, liver disease, cirrhosis. Any of those words, uh, osteoarthritis, chronic pain, all those words bring up images. 
images of inflammation and pain and swelling. When you think of things like that, you actually release chemicals that correspond. So here's another instead of, you know, a replacement with words in your head. Instead of saying, I have that, you say, I no longer have that. And instead of even talking about it in the first place, you say, I feel so good. You talk about instead healing things, things that make you feel good, things that are moving you forward in your thinking. Like, you know, the other day I just noticed how precious my pets are. This is just an example. Of course, I noticed that a long time ago. But notice some things that are precious, that are just precious, and acknowledge it. Things like that that will elevate your emotion to a higher vibration. Remember, love and gratitude, appreciation, and being humble. All of that is actually a higher frequency, which allows your cells to vibrate on a higher frequency, which allows yourself to heal, allows you to heal your avatar. You're the CEO and you get to decide. All right. So I dove in, I dove in hard. I watched every single video I could. And then I watched them again. And then I watched them again. Some of his videos, if they resonated with me, I would dig them out and watch them four and five times and come back to them again. Why? Because every time I would catch another little detail that would resonate with me, another little detail where I could actually go, oh, look at that. I didn't even think of that last time. And this time I see that I'm, I've achieved that. Watch them again and again, and then come back and watch me again and to, together you know, leave your comments below and tell me how you're doing. Tell me the details of how you're applying these principles to your life. These methods, these, these, these wild methods to your life. <laughs> and they'll be wild because you'll start to really change and see real results, which to me is wild. Not to mention groovy. <laughs> I mean, that's a far cry from being stuck with needles like this and told you're going to the cancer treatment center for the rest of your life. And, oh, by the way, we're cutting both knees out and you're going to have brand new ones. You know, my next door neighbor, oh, I love her dearly. She's such a sweetheart. She's so kind. She had total knee replacement. Bless her heart. They're not that great. She loves them one day and she curses them the next, you know? And I figure, well, if I can heal them on my own, wouldn't that be better? So that's what I'm trying because I too am supposed to have total knee replacement. But at this point, I'm refusing. Why? Because I can now do a full deep knee bend. I can do several. I can do a bunch in a row to music. Do I count them? No, <laughs> that's not what it's about. I get into the groove. I get into a trance. I let myself go in a trance with the music and I bend up and down. I hang on to the kitchen sink, right? I put Ducky on my shoulder, do some dishes together, get in the groove. I sit down and play some piano, exercise my fingers. If you don't have a piano, and you have arthritis in your hands, put some music on, get into a trance, and go like this. Now, listen to the words you use, okay, because that's really part of it. Oh my goodness, I can feel the tingling sensation of the healing of the universe moving into my body. And I can feel that and it's healing me and it's coming from the quantum field and thank you so much 
I really appreciate this and thank you for the wisdom for allowing me to learn all about this and to allow me to continue to heal myself. Do you see? These are the words I use in my meditations, but not just in my meditations. These are actually the words I use as I walk around throughout my day in my head. I walk around as if I am some kind of a medicine woman, because I am. Tell yourself that. You're powerful. You are way more powerful than you give yourself credit. Brothers and sisters, your avatar is a quantum computer, and it's run by your emotions. You can change your vibration by your emotions. Come on, you already know that one, right? When you're happy, you feel elevated. When you're down in the dumps and you're on your pity pot or you're paying attention to your symptoms and why me, your vibration is very low, which brings on more cortisol. You actually release more stress hormone called cortisol when you allow yourself to go there in those lower vibrations. What does cortisol do? It causes inflammation. Ah, <laughs> we have to guard ourselves. We have to guard our thoughts. We have to be the protector of happiness. <laughs> does that mean you can't ever be, you know, blue? Of course not. Here's the secret. How long do you let yourself be blue or stressed out? You know, that's really the secret. It's okay. And it's actually important to allow yourself to have crappy emotions once in a while. But allow yourself only this long. Put a limit on it. And then say, okay, I did that. I grieved. I'm done being pissed off. I'm done having negative thoughts about that person or that situation because it's time for me to get back on track and heal. If I get stuck in those emotions, my cells can't heal. They're too busy protecting themselves from all the cortisol I'm releasing. They're being bombarded with stress hormones and all they know is it's time to fight. Fight or flight. You've heard of that, right? Cells can actually not rejuvenate. They cannot divide and grow and repair. If you're dealing with a disease, you want your cells repairing. Well, when you're releasing cortisol because you're stressed out all the time, cells are not repairing. In fact, they're being more damaged. And you keep damaging them over and over and over. Well, it can manifest into cancer. It can manifest into autoimmune disease and any number of things known to man. <laughs> so, but I'm here to tell you, there is another choice. And boy, it is a choice. It really is. And once you realize that, it's kind of like a burden is lifted off. It's like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. You mean to tell me I had that ability and that power the whole time? It was, it was right here, it was all around me? Yeah, <laughs> it's called the quantum field. And you tap into it with your emotions, okay? And so you have to repeat throughout your day affirmations. Add a girl, Groovy Kim, you caught yourself. You didn't put yourself down. Instead, you replaced it with a good thought. You didn't put someone else down. You caught yourself. You replaced it with a better thought. A positive thought. You practice this all the time and you start to literally rewire your brain. When you learn something new, you're growing new synapses in your neurons. When you practice, just like riding a bike, something new, when you practice something new, you are rewiring those neurons. And just like a bike, after a while, it becomes easy. It's not 
anything you have to even think about anymore. It just is like being happy and no longer putting yourself or anyone else down or blaming or reaching into the past for what ails you. When you're meditating, I, I, here's what I like to do. I like to also make sure that I say to myself, please help me cut the ties to the past, the people, places, and things that are tying me down and replace those with kindness and love, right? Whack those cords, just like an umbilical cord. Whack them in your mind's eye. All of those things that are tying you down, whether it's your childhood, somebody who wronged you, someone you can't stand, someone who makes you cry, any of that. Unworthiness towards yourself, you know who you are. Cut it. Make a conscious effort. Say, I'm going to cut this. Thank you for helping me cut this. Say thank you to your spirit guide, to God, to Jesus, to whoever. It doesn't matter. You are the CEO of your quantum computer. And this quantum computer has an entire pharmacy in it that can heal you. We know this when you cut your finger it automatically heals. You didn't have to do a thing, right? I'm not talking about, <clears throat> you know, if you have an emergency, like a huge lacer you know, laceration to where you need to be sewn up, you know, reattach an arm or something like that, of course, go to the hospital. Of course, you need Western medicine. What I'm talking about is systemic things like autoimmune disease or anything else that doesn't require stitches, reattachment, or emergency intervention, right? Like a car accident. If you have anything that's chronic or that you've been told there is no cure for, uh, or just is chronic, like chronic pain, chronic stress, anxiety, anything like that, I'm here to say, it is absolutely curable and you have the power to do it, but you have to believe. You got to believe it. Part of its placebo effect, part of it is the real thing because that's how the placebo effect works. If you believe in something strong enough, you release the corresponding chemicals like serotonin <laughs> and the happy chemicals and the kind of chemicals that relax you. Deep breathing does that. Remember, that's why you always pair slow, deep breathing with meditation. Because it releases the correct chemicals to slow down the autonomic nervous system. So that then you can begin to let your cells get back into the repair mode and heal your body. But after meditation, you wake up happy and feeling better. You have to maintain that throughout your day. You got to catch yourself when you lose it. Because when you lose it, you lose that connection to the quantum field. The minute you get angry at somebody or you get frustrated or you lose that, I am one with the quantum field and I have this power feeling. The, the, the minute you lose that, you're cutting the tie to the quantum field. We don't want to cut that tie. We want to cut the ties from the past. Snippy, snippy on those. We want to knit together the good ties, the loving kindness ties towards the, ourselves that are meant for us, that's already there in the quantum field. Okay? Feel it like a hug and let yourself have it because if you don't give yourself permission, it won't work. You have to give yourself permission to feel it and feel the love and feel the joy of being alive and what it is to be the CEO of your avatar and to having the awesome power 
of being able to heal it at will. Mine, mine healed within weeks. Not all the way. All the way? Probably never. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm definitely 98% better. I'll take that. I'll probably work on the rest, the 2%, the rest of my life. I'd say those are pretty good odds and I'll take it. That's great. What does that mean? Meditate every day. Re remain happy. I have to maintain a level of not only happiness, but wonderment, gratitude. How cool is this life? How cool is this quantum? I can do crazy things like Make my mouth water at will by thinking of a lemon. Release cortisol, stress hormones by thinking of someone who irritates me. I can do so many things at will. I can make myself just giddy if I want to. Thinking of something so fun that I remember in my past. That releases all kinds of really good chemicals. It's your own pharmacy. And believe it or not, you heal when you do that. You really do. And that's how I did it. And you can do it without going to any workshops. Although I highly recommend going, because I'm going. I'm going to go. Come hell or high water, I'm going. <laughs> so, you know, often people will ask me, did I have a big breakthrough? I think the biggest breakthrough came in one of my meditations when... I had just had it. I was so scared. I did not want to go to the Canson Infusion Center or do any of these other things they were telling me or cut my knees out <laughs> and replace them with robots or whatever they had planned. I did not want to do any of that. I was stressed out, right? So I had a meditation one evening. I said, if I'm going to do this and I'm going to believe in what Dr. Do Dr. Joe Dispenza is teaching me, if I'm going to believe in what he is teaching me, I'm going to dive in wholeheartedly and I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to hold anything back. So I lit some candles, turned off all the lights. I was by myself. I pulled my knees up to my chest and I cried and I hugged my knees and I apologized. To my knees and I said I am so sorry I've called you bad knees my whole life I've described you to others as my bad knees right I say my bad knees all the time my whole life for years and I apologize I said I'm sorry I'm never gonna call you that again in fact I have a new nickname don't laugh I tend to make nicknames. Cadillac knees. That's right. I got cat. Groovy Kim has Cadillac knees. See what I did there? Changed my vocabulary. So now in my head, I say, I got Cadillac knees. Isn't that wonderful? Honu helped me build them. We build them together in my meditations. Like I say, watch my video about Honu, my sea turtle. So uh, I meditate and I have her go in my joints and my uh, knees and, and in my hands and I have her uh, repair the cartilage and it's a whole thing. I go swimming with her under the sea in my mind's eye and um, get real grateful, right? So I hugged, this was my breakthrough. So I hugged my knees, I had a good cry, I apologized wholeheartedly. I'm so sorry. I'm never going to refer to you as bad knees again. And from now on, Honu and I are going to work on you and repair you. And I'm going to give you nothing but my love and gratitude and refer to you as my Cadillac knees from now on. Well, <laughs> I'm not kidding. It worked. I'm not kidding. After just a few days, I started noticing that I could actually walk around better. Absolutely amazing. But it's if you believe it, thus it will be so. You actually release the chemicals in your brain to where your cells will begin to heal. 
And the other one I did, remember I told you I had uh, all kinds of hunks of cartilage. The last MRI I took was uh, February of 2020. <laughs> I had six giant hunks of cartilage. Oh, I don't know if you can see. About one inch was the biggest one. And then I'm going to say like a half inch and then a quarter inch. I had all sizes, like six of them in my left knee. The right knee is another story, but it's right now it wasn't quite as bad. But my left one was the worst, right? And I had all these hunks of cartilage and I'd take a step and one of those would get lodged under my kneecap. Oh, it hurt so bad. And I, so in my meditation, Honu and I would sit together and I would swim with her. Now I would put on a sea turtle movie on my TV, light some candles, turn off all the lights, and I would watch a little bit of the sea turtle. Watch her swim and glide all beautiful, like the footage I included in my in my sea turtle movie. And I would watch that and then I would close my eyes. And now there's flickering light in the room, right? So that dances with the light in your eyes anyway. And then I would really let my imagination loose, man. Let it loose. You got to go with it. You have to make the placebo effect work, okay? You got to go with it. So I would imagine Honu swimming around in there and she's repairing those knees of mine, of my avatars, right? I'm the observer. I'm watching. It's not my body. It's my avatar. I'm the CEO of it. And Honu and I are repairing it. We're on a quest in my meditation to swim around, grab the sea kelp, which is my cartilage in my meditation, and poke it in there where it needs cushioning. And then Honu goes around and grabs those big hunks of floating cartilage and nibbles them. She gobbles them up. And I imagine her like a snapping turtle, like Pac-Man, gobbling up those big hunks of cartilage that are floaters in my knee that caused me so much trouble and so much pain over the years. And lo and behold, after a few weeks of that meditation of her imagining Honu gobbling up the hunks of cartilage, I couldn't find him anymore. I could physically go like this and I would take Michael, my sweetheart, I would take his hand and put it on my knee and go, honey, feel this. And, and he would move it around and go, <laughs> he could feel it too. Big hunks floating around. I'll tell you what, I can't find them anymore. And so I don't forget to thank Honu. I do not forget to thank her. You have to be grateful. You have to say thank you so much for gobbling those up and taking care of those, getting rid of those, and packing my knee with more brand new cartilage so that I have Cadillac knees. <laughs> See how I do it? And you know what? You do it how you do it. You be you. Because whatever works for you will work for you as long as you believe it. Okay, study it, dive in, watch how I do it, and then apply it to your own situation. Make up your own mind movie, just like I did with Honu and my sea turtle. However you do it, it can be done. And the main thing is, you have to believe it, because I am living proof and feeling so much better without any symptoms. They're all gone. I'm here to tell you. Every once in a while, I'll feel a little stiff or I'll step wrong and I'll feel a little like, what was that? And I think, oh, maybe a little bit of cartilage left, maybe in my left knee. Um, I'll sit down and meditate and I'm good the rest of the day again. Now, in the old days, I was hanging on to furniture and about ready to cry. It hurt so bad. My knees were swollen twice the normal size. I don't have swelling like that. Not anymore. I don't think I'm perfect. I, I can't sit here and tell you a lie. I will not ever do that. I, am, I don't think that I am absolutely cured. I don't think there's really such a thing. However... 
I am certainly in nowhere near where I was before I started studying uh, the quantum field and how you can tap into it and learn to heal yourself. Because it's all a vibration. And if you're vibrating on a frequency of stress and frustration and pain, pain is a, a vibration too. If you're always in pain, that's a stress and that is a vibration. You have to learn how to lower that stress level, raise your vibration to a loving, kind, more fulfilling, more gratitude type vibration. That actually is a higher frequency. Your cells will begin to follow suit and vibrate in a more healthy way. And then you can heal. It's a practice. Some people have a boom, burst and they, the pineal gland will release some DMT. That's right. You have DMT. Who knew? Uh, and that is a hallucinogen. One of the strongest ones known to man. And you sometimes when you're meditating can do that. Um, it all means the same thing. It is the quantum field trying to talk to you. So you need to let it talk to you. Don't overanalyze it. You have to get out of the way. Step out of the way. And let the quantum field do all the healing. You put your intention out there. I intend to heal. And I know that I have this power. Right? That's your intention. And then you pair it. Pair it up. Pair it up. With an elevated emotion. And you do this. In your meditations as well as your waking life and you will begin to heal change the pictures in your mind and the words that you say to yourself and to others of course but you change the pictures in your mind and the words that you use and you actually change the chemistry in your body and begin to upgrade your biology you begin to signal your DNA in different ways and unlock other potentials. You have the potential to be very sick. You also have the potential to be very well. All of these potentials and all the ones in between exist. It all depends on which one you are willing to choose. Notice how I said willing. If you're willing to choose health and willing to believe that you are powerful enough to do this all on your own, without a workshop, just with each other, you and I and each other, and believe that, yes, we can, because, yes, I did. Look at me. Would you like to see? Let me back up and show you. Can you see? Look at me, deep knee bends, look at me. You see? I'm all better, I can walk, I can do a deep knee bend, I can dance, I can move my fingers, I can take my glasses on and off. That's when I just thought of. I was having a hard time even doing that a few years ago. My goodness. Um, you know, you forget how far you've come. And, and when you start to have, uh, see some real results, don't forget to be thankful because you can, you can lose them again if you get into the stressed out mode again. You have to remain grateful. You have to keep that smile on your face. Remember, just the act of smiling actually stimulates the vagus nerve. Just the act of slowing your breath down and doing some slow, deep breathing, like in meditations or not. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're meditating. Purposeful breathing. And a smile. Well, now those both stimulate the vagus nerve. That's the largest nerve in your body and it feeds every single organ and it's very vital for healing. If you're not working with this correctly, your cells 
will have a heck of a time trying to heal. You really need the vagus nerve involved. And that means nice, slow, deep breathing. Trying to maintain a smile in your meditations too, but throughout the day as well. Try to go to sleep with a smile on your face. That's another one, right? How many others can you think of? Leave your comments below. There's a lot of other ways we can incorporate it in our life. Ways of happiness, ways of looking at things. Because when you learn how to heal yourself, you're in more control. You no longer have to rely on what the doctors are saying you have to do. I don't have to take medication anymore. I am not a doctor. I'm not telling you what to do. Indeed, please do what you feel is best for you. I'm just offering you another way, another potential, another possibility. The possibility is there. It's if you want it and if you believe it and if you want to go for it or not. It's your choice. I'm just here to tell you that it worked for me and I know it can work for you. Please give it a try. Please subscribe and click on the bell icon, please. And that way you'll know when I release a new video. Thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate it. And together, we'll keep doing this. And please do leave your comments below because I do want to learn from you as well. Okay? Because we're in this together. And when we heal together, that's groovy.